Hi, I'm Darren Akuda, and I lead the Ground Truth team at Aurora. At Ground Truth, we build the training data sets that power the machine learning models behind the Aurora driver. Today, we're going to be talking about the Aurora data engine and how we advance the Aurora driver through valuable data that drives machine learning and AI. Data is key. As we look to deploy our product commercially at scale, we need to make sure it operates naturally and safely, not just in some situations, but in all situations. The real world is a messy place. There are a variety of situations that can be encountered, such as emergency vehicles. It is critical that the Aurora driver can handle situations like the ones you see on the screen, and the key to unlocking those abilities is data. When it comes to AI and ML, you'll often hear data is key, but there's more to data than sheer quantity. Aurora has collected over 4.5 million miles of driving data since we started, and that's an incredible asset. Data is the fuel that feeds machine learning. We use it to train the Aurora driver to understand and handle the different situations that we encounter in the real world. But not all data is of equal value. The real magic lies in how we find and use the right data to solve specific challenges. Situations like the one in the previous slide are not uncommon, but thankfully for all of us, they also aren't constant. This is why it's critical that we can filter through our vast and ever-growing raw data to find and label the right diverse, interesting, and specific data to train the Aurora driver. And that's where the Aurora data engine comes in. Today, we're excited to talk to you about how we advance the Aurora driver through valuable data that drives machine learning and AI. We've built important key foundational tools that enable fast interactions and rapid innovation and advancement, enabling us to power the Aurora data engine. More specifically, the Aurora Data Engine is our platform for collecting, searching, labeling, and training our machine learning models in a flywheel that uses model and system performance metrics to continually improve the quality of our data sets in the most efficient and impactful way. On the screen, you can see how our data flows. This fast iteration cycle provides engineers with the information they need to rapidly advance the capabilities of the Aurora driver. We also leverage these tools to tackle the long tail of autonomy effectively. With each new capability the Aurora driver is built to handle, we can use the data we've already collected to advance feature development rather than recollecting data each time. A tight feedback loop from model and system performance back to data sourcing and labeling allows us to continually improve our data sets in the most efficient and impactful way. Now, let's walk through this with a concrete example, navigating construction scenes. I'm sure you've driven through situations like this. There's a lot going on. We need to detect the cones and the barrels and the signs as early as possible so we can appropriately slow down, change lanes, and handle situations like a human would. And these aren't just isolated detections. You have to be able to reason that the line of barrels actually defines a new blockage region versus being a set of specific obstacles. When we first started encountering scenarios like this, we weren't able to handle them autonomously. In this talk, we'll show you how we leverage the Aurora data engine to unlock this capability so that the Aurora driver could handle situations like this smoothly, as you see in the video. The first step in creating these capabilities was finding the right scenes that had construction elements. Aurora collects thousands of miles of on-road dri driving data per day. We structure our operations in on-road testing to deliberately target the most valuable events and scenarios. But how do we find the valuable data? Our process can often feel like finding a needle in a haystack. To ensure we're doing this effectively, we need tools to identify the valuable items in the stream and focus the team's time. So we collect vehicle logs the data collected from our sensors and compute that power the Aurora driver. Logs are annotated on the road live by vehicle operators and tagged automatically when uploaded to our cloud pipelines. This combination of manual and automated tagging gives a rich set of high quality information to draw from. Our state-of-the-art suite of log search tools enables us to quickly filter and analyze data by the many attributes, including geospatial location, time of day, in the driving scenes, scenarios, and objects present at any moment in time. This enables the team to work with surgical precision on the most valuable and relevant data to the autonomy capabilities that we are developing. For even deeper insights into our data, we need systems to process this effectively and extract the most value from it. This is uniquely challenging because of the immense scale of Aurora's data set. Our log mining platform enables engineers to identify new events within existing logs without recollecting new data. Engineers can write simple queries rather than code to find events. This takes the complex problem of identifying overlapping capabilities and simplifies it to a single query. Once we've found the relevant scenes, the next step is to label them, converting the raw data into structured data that our model training pipeline can consume. While many companies look at labels as a commodity and outsource labeling, we are investing in in-house labeling resources as well. 
which gives us a strategic and competitive advantage critical to deploying safely, quickly, and broadly. We can customize our labeling tools based on our specific needs and sensors. For example, Aurora's proprietary first light LiDAR. We can leverage our existing onboard models, as well as develop additional offline models based on our own label data to create labels more effectively and efficiently than an external vendor can. The tight integration of labeling into the Aurora Data Engine allows us to focus on generating the right labels that can improve our capability and performance versus just creating as many labels as possible. Again, it's not just about quantity, it's really about quality. Since the beginning of Aurora, we've been doing what we refer to as 4D labeling, which is labels of 3D LiDAR data over time. These labels are composed of volumes containing rich attributes and metadata. Over the years, we have defined and iterated on a robust labeling standard that represents the real world through a set of rules, ontology, and policies. Something that sets our latest iteration of the labeling standard apart is that it is entity-centric, meaning labels for a real-world object across all sensors, LiDAR, and camera are associated as the same object across the entire time it is visible. Many companies treat each label as an independent observation. In contrast, the entity-centric model means we have one unified ground truth for a real-world object. And as you've seen from the sensor and perception stations, that allows us to reason jointly across all sensor modalities instead of handling each of them independently. While labeling is a process primarily driven by humans, we use machine learning internally to add automation throughout the labeling process, achieving far higher quality and efficiency than possible with humans alone. One example of this is 4D to 2D label transfer, where we trained a model to automatically take a LiDAR track for an object and project it into accurate bounding boxes of the same object in the camera views. This is how we quickly and accurately create associations between observations, forming the single entity that represents the real world object across the different sensors in time. Prior to the creation of the label transfer model, association was a time consuming and error prone human task which now takes a matter of seconds and is guaranteed correct by construction. Another area where automation has shown a huge impact is in labeling moving objects over time. Rather than have humans label every individual frame within a time sequence, we use a realistic motion model that leverages a causal perception, that is looking forward and backwards through time, to automatically set the position of an object between sparse keyframes. This is much more accurate than a simple linear interpolation as it incorporates the actual movement of the object. As you saw in the forecasting station, velocities and accelerations in our labels are incredibly important for accurate actor forecasting. This is another place where we are ahead of standard labeling vendors that focus solely on where the boxes are, but not how they move. In conclusion, as you saw today, when you've collected more than four and a half million miles of driving data, identifying the valuable data can feel like finding a needle in a haystack. Intelligently finding valuable data unlocks its power. We've developed state-of-the-art tools that give us exactly what we need to do just that, vastly improving our autonomy capabilities and model performance. And we don't just stop there. As you learned about at the simulation station, we aggregate these valuable experiences into systems and databases, then use simulation to develop permutations, turning a single encounter into the equivalent of thousands. Thanks for listening to our talk. I hope you learned something about how both the quality and quantity of data are crucial to building machine learning models.